is Kathy Iconis with QBO Chat. Um, today we're doing a live demo with um, Avalara, and they're going to be showing us their Avatax product. And I have Jesse Powell with us that's going to be showing us the product. So introduce yourself, Jesse. Great. Thanks for having me, Kathy. Uh, yes, for everybody else, my name is Jesse Powell. I am a business development manager here with Avalara. I uh, spent the last two years on our sales side, actually managing our SMB sales market, uh, primarily focused for the QuickBooks environment. Um, but prior to Avalara, I actually worked as a microfinance consultant, so love working with small businesses, um, really have a passion for this. Um, as okay. Kathy mentioned, we're going to do a little bit of a demo and overview of how Avalara's system works and uh, how you can really leverage this either in your own practice or for your clients. That sound good, Kathy? We're going to go over that? Yeah, it's perfect. I'm excited. Good. Um, really, first, I'm, I'm absolutely going to spend time in QBO. Let's just start high level so that you kind of get a picture of, of what we're going to be creating and, and the interaction Avalara has between either yourself or your clients and the taxing jurisdictions. Um, so this is an easy, simple workflow, and I'll use my mouse here to help highlight um, imagine here in the top right, this picture of an invoice is your practice. Um, and this is anywhere you need tax decisions to be made, the sales tax decisions. Uh, what Avalara has created is a connector. Um, really, it's a plugin. And this, in this case, it's just an app you're going to download that allows QBO to interact with Avalara's tax engine represented by this A in the cloud. What will happen is in real time, transactional data flows to us. We make a determination based off of the rates and the rules, really all the complexities of sales tax, and we bring that sales tax decision right back into QBO. Avalara will then give you your own Avalara account. You can log in, but from there, we uh, typically are then creating, we're filing and we're remitting the sales tax returns on behalf of our clients as well. So really it's full end-to-end -end solution, not just calculation, but also the remittance and making sure you're compliant with the taxing jurisdiction. So that looks like a great picture. How do we get there? Um, well, first, you have to download our app. Uh, we are right within the App Store. Uh, you can go search for us. Um, it shifts you know, from day to day where it will be most prevalent, but it's very easy to find. Um, we encourage you to go give it a shot. Um, there's a nice big blue button. Once you do find our app, you know, you're happy to watch a video. There's reviews and pricing and support. We'd love to, for you to write a review. If you do uh, take a chance to take a look at this application, uh, please tell us what your thoughts are. After you download the app, it's going to ask you for a very few simple, you know, authorization, uh, kind of check to make sure that things are okay. Um, I highly suggest you give it a shot. We have a free trial through the end of the year. We will be doing all your tax decisions and filing uh, at really no cost. There's actually additional promotions. We're going to give you a, a heads up on those at the end here. I'll have a colleague of mine step in and uh, lay those out. Once you download the app, we're going to prompt for a few things. Once again, this is mostly a verification of who you are, where do you want your Avalara credentials to be sent, ask you a little bit about where you intend to collect tax. Obviously, you might have lots of taxing jurisdictions you're within. We're here to help set that up, um, but for the instance of the app, we try to make it very simple and kind of guide you to uh, a very quick download process. After you've completed these three easy steps, you'll go back to QuickBooks Online. Uh, you'll also be given a nice uh, email. Uh, it does look a bit different than this one, but this is just a bare bones example, um, trying to highlight the keys that you are giving uh, an Avatax account, somewhere that all your transactional data will be flown to. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like, but that email is key for you to have access to that account. So once you've done that, you've completed the process, right? You have real-time tax decisions power powered by Avalara. We're working within QBO. At an invoice, estimate, credit memo, anywhere you're really needing that sales tax decision uh, will be powered by us. Kathy, do you have any questions about kind of what that looks like? Um, would you rather just see it in a real format at this time? Yeah, I'd love to see how it works and, and get into the nitty gritty of it. So I already have kind of like questions of where things go, but I didn't want to jump ahead. No, yeah, that's, that's absolutely understandable. Um, and what I'm going to show you, it's a real-time tax decision. When I say that, uh, just something to keep in mind is what Avalara actually does. Uh, our tax engine operates at about a tenth of a second from a calculation perspective. Uh, what we're doing that amount of time is we're validating addresses, we're converting everything to latitude, longitude, we reference where you have an obligation to collect tax, we provide rate and product taxability, making sure that we do assess tax accordingly given what you're selling, where you're selling it, 
Uh, and lastly, we also look at whether or not the customer is exempt. So without further and ado, I, know, I was like, yep. and I I know that there's some crazy tax laws out there, so you know people need to understand that it's not as easy as oh I'm just right in this location. Do you have any like examples of some of those crazy yeah. tax rules out there that that uh, different people have to pay attention to? Yeah, it, it's a it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, so, and I'll just put something up on the screen here to kind of make this very uh, very applicable here. One moment, I'm going to share a different side with you guys. And sorry to throw you off your flow. No, that's fine. I'm happy to share, and this is kind of a fun example. Um, so here's a uh, just a, a jurisdictional map of the United States. Um, there's over 11,000 different sales tax jurisdictions here in the U.S. So that means, you know, a different state, a different county, you know, a special RTD tax in Colorado or some sort of transportation tax in California. There's 11,000 of those. They are continually changing their rates. They're continually changing their boundaries. And so it's very complex. It's this ever-moving target. Uh, last year alone, there was over 14,000 changes to those taxing jurisdictions. Huh. So within those, just assigning the rate, as you can imagine, very, very complex, a huge headache. Uh, but not only figuring out the rate, figuring out what is and isn't taxable is a whole nother animal in itself. Um, just to give you an example, I think we're sharing a screen here. It's yeah. go black on. Um, to give you an example here, you know, candy bars in Indiana. Nestle Crunch is taxable. Exempt would be a Kit Kat or a Twix. One ingredient was different between those two products. You know, one had flour and one didn't. You go for a balloon ride in Missouri, make sure you cut the tether, you're going to save some money on tax, right? Um, software, only tax at the local level in California, meaning only Boulder County would tax it, but the state does not. So those laws, those little tricky ones, are all over the country, and they're not uniform. Every state has control over what is and is not taxable. Does that make sense and kind of... Yeah, and it's every state, and then, well, yeah, what you're talking about is even every locality has... Yeah control. Yeah. Um, and it's always changing. So just a very easy one. You know, clearly the tech industry is a hot topic for states. You know, they're they're doing their best to uh, create funding. So a great way for a state to climb out of its recess recession is just to tax more things. Um, mm -hmm. And so they'll update these tax laws. This is a great one. 22 states were taxed. We're taxing downloadable software. And now it's 33. So. Wow. Yeah, and that's going to be across all sorts of industries. So I mentioned software. This is the same, you know, clothing and apparel, very complex. Uh, in in New York, if you sold shoes for $100, that's not taxable. If you sell them for 110 it is taxable. Um, dietary supplements, services, you know, this is really uh, a one-size-fits-all. States are coming at you from all angles. So. And so, so obviously your engine has all the technology to be able to figure this out. So how does that, yeah, like let's – See how that applies and works in in the app. Yep, absolutely. Um, and so the, the the beauty here is I'm I'm sending a lot of information. It's daunting. This is we could, we refer to it a lot of times. Chimp simple, right? We take a lot of the guesswork out. We're not here to uh, educate about the burden of sales tax and then send you on your way, right? Our system will mm -hmm. take on that. So um, I'm in QuickBooks Online Accountant version, um, but it will operate just the same here. I've downloaded the app. I have my own Avatax account. Um, what I'm going to do is just simply create an invoice. It's definitely the easiest way to see our system in action. First thing I'll note, uh, I've opened up an invoice. This probably looks very similar to every invoice you've ever seen, but because I have Avalara, there's this estimate tax button that is now available for me. So that's going to come into play here in a moment. We will uh, we'll send to a California customer today. So I've got a pre-built customer. I've got a billing address and a shipping address. I'll note these are two different addresses, which is very important when it comes to sales tax. We're really going to be driving this tax decision off of this shipping address today. Um, I'm going to add a few items. Um, I'm going to certainly pick on a few complex tax um, tax items. So let's do... A big computer, you know, a tangible good, will provide software as a service, a software license. We'll do some sort of maintenance agreement. Um, and let's say you need to install, you know, the computer as well. So a very standard maybe software offering. 
uh, a few line items. Now, this is a very complex tax decision that needs to be made. You need to understand what is and isn't taxable in the state of California, what is the exact rate that is applicable both at the state, local, special taxing jurisdiction at this address. Guess what? I just pressed mm -hmm. that button and that's taken care of. Avalara grabbed all of that information and also just for the point of this demonstration, you need to note that I am collecting tax in the state of California, so it understood that. Okay. And it made the right determination and put it right within the invoice. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's just pause. Does any of that seem like magic, or does that make sense? Is there clarity? I well, can it, I mean, obviously, it sounds, it looks like magic, and and I'm guessing, I, I'm like a little scared about the setup and stuff. I'm wondering if there's a lot of setup on the back end to get all these things entered and knowing, telling Avatex what all this stuff is. Yeah, it's a great question, um, and typically the first one. So um, I'd like to show you the setup part and actually what this looks like on our side all in one kind of fell swoop. So I'm going okay. to follow I'm gonna follow this invoice uh, and go over to our tax engine, which we all refer to as Avatax. Mm -hmm. um, this is that A in the cloud. This is where all of your transactional data is flowing to. Um, and I have my own account, and so I'll – Log in as though I'm a first-time user here. Um, you have a nice little home page. It's a very simple landing page. Um, I don't want to spend too much time in the weeds here, but you know you have obviously links to our help center and account management team. Um, what I'll focus in is, um, first of all, let's save this invoice so that we can follow it. So we're going to save and close this QuickBooks Online invoice, and let's let it do its thing. There we go. So that was invoice 1049. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to show you what that invoice looks like in Avalara. So we have a reporting engine of all the transactions you send to us, right? And this is only accessible by you or your company. So you can have multiple companies. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to populate this based off of, you know, a string of information. You want to look for a document code? Are you looking for a date range? You know, you can really easily find uh, any transaction you send through our service. So we'll just refresh. Make sure we capture any data, uh, and then we will open up an invoice. Let's open that tab. Uh, as you can see here, this is the fun part where we make sure we get everything flowing through. One moment here. And then you have to remember what, what invoice you actually created just now. <laughs> There's a lot, yeah. There's a lot I just did right there. One second. Yeah, I'm here. like demos are hard. You got to remember these little things. Uh, yeah. Well, I also have um, an enormous amount of people who uh, who play within my system, so that's another terrifying component there. That's so much. <laughs> okay, there it is. Um, so here, here in this example, you know, I can see the exact transaction that was flown over. Um, we've got an origin destination and uh, sorry, an origin and a destination address populated. Uh, Avalara mm -hmm. did nice little address validation. It adds the zip plus four, makes this look really nice and clean. Um, we show you any pertinent details about the invoice. Really, that's not the data you're caring for. It's how did we decide what was taxed and right. how much tax should be assessed. So we're doing this at a line item level detail. We're not looking at a summary of that invoice and telling you tax. That would be inaccurate, right? Each item has a unique tax decision. Mm -hmm. So. For every item, let's say a big computer, for example, it's a very simple item. It's just taxable as long as you need to collect tax in that state. So it's $10,000. We're understanding it's taxable. $950 in tax is assessed. And there's a state, county, city, and special jurisdiction that all, all overlap each other right at that location. So we're looking at the rooftop exactly where this took place. Now, I'm going to kind of get on your point here about how do we understand some more complex things? Um, and let, let's pick on this software maintenance contract, for example. So this is a $175 item. We've broken into two, 50%, you know, we've really taken it into, split it into two. 87.50 is not taxable, 87.50 is taxable. Why did we do that? Uh, well, I guess the state of California deems that to be a partially taxable offering. Our system knows that and only taxes half of the full amount. Now, the way we knew what it was that was sold is we have a relationship that is created between your items and what we refer to as a tax code. As you can see here, every item has a subsequent tax code. Okay. Uh, 
So basically, and this is how I did it, I took my item list out of QuickBooks Online and I uploaded it to Avalara's uh, tax engine. I then just match it to our goods and services description that meets, you know, what I describe my service to be. So for example, I said I have a computer software maintenance, pre-written software, and this is exactly what I'm selling. This description is a written description from Avalara that mm -hmm. has 50 state research behind it. And so it's a real, it's a one-time setup opportunity where you do need to create that relationship. But from now on, every time I sell a software maintenance contract, Avalara recognizes what it is and then looks, where are you providing this? Is it taxable in that state? Is it not? Is it partially taxable? So we take all the guesswork out. You have a one-time, you know, real relationship between your item list and our tax codes. Now, anyone who does billing, you know, it could be a sales rep doing a quote. They don't need to be privy to this tax knowledge and, and how these things should be taxed. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's always managed within your account. We do provide support if necessary. Um, you know, lots of you know, we've got thousands of these goods and service categories. Typical client might use two or three of them. Um, the reason we have so many is we cater to software industry, to services, to supplements, to food, retail, um, you know, manufacturing. There's just a lot and lots of different tax codes. There's about 35 million different product and service tax exemptions just in the United States. So as you can imagine, we're trying to cover as much of that as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and those are not stagnant, right? We're updating this daily. So if tomorrow you had something change, we got you covered. Um, that's readily available uh, at your fingertips if you want to see transactional data. Um, you have an audit scenario that shows up. As you can imagine, having a full record of every item ever processed and the tax decision made is incredibly valuable. Uh, a disgruntled customer wants to know, how did you collect tax? Uh, I've been living in this location forever. I know that this is not taxed. Um, you have this at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. After we collect tax, there is a final component you do have the obligation to then file and remit sales tax returns. Uh, there's a number of ways you can do that with Avalara. Um, I'm going to walk you through really two of the most common practices. Um, apologize, I think the screen keeps shutting out. That I see it perfectly fine, so that's uh, good. I, I, I keep losing connection. Um, either way, I'll explain what should be on the screen. Uh, right now, <laughs> we have listed here the sales tax returns tab and what we call a liability worksheet. Uh, we have listed there the states that you're required to file in, and we produce a report of your monthly sales, the non-taxable versus taxable amounts, what's your tax liability, do you have consumer use, and the total amount that is due. You're simply approving those numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, at the bottom, we're gonna show you a total, and you click save on your account. From there, we'll pull that money from an account you designate, you know, it's usually an ACH draw, and we guarantee to create file and remit each individual return on your behalf. We're going to do this in line with your agreement with the state. So if you're a quarterly remitter with Washington, you're going to remain a quarterly remitter. We're going to automate that process. We're not here to change your relationship. Uh, just simply set it and forget it as the goal. Awesome. Yeah. Um, at the end get, of the month. Yeah, I'm assuming you, you get a notification saying, hey, you have this much money going to be taken out of your account in like two days or something. Yeah, and you can set it up to say, you know, if I don't get to it, I trust Avalara, just automatically follow, uh, file. Or, you know, if I don't get to it, I'd like Avalara to file my return, but I'll send in payments separately, right? You can create some sort of rules around whatever you feel is a best practice as a business um, and given the level of trust you have in, in who's managing this. So, mm -hmm. yep. Um, that's, one, that's one option, right? And, and I'd say the majority of you know, users of our tax engine leverage the filing. You know, it's the continuity of compliance, the great benefit. Um, if you do leverage this service, we have guarantees around the fact that we will file properly, we will file on time, we will get you any early filing. Actually, they're more referred to as timely filing discounts. The state mm -hmm. rewards you for filing. We'll credit those to your account. Um, we'll, add, we'll even answer tax notices. If you have a question from the state about your return, you can forward it to your account manager and it basically becomes a ticket. We're going to go take care of that for you. Um, lastly, at the end of the month, you have a filing archive. You want to come see PDF copies of what's been done. You have a request for an audit. You know, you have everything you need in just one easy place right here. So let me ask you a question too. Um, it brings up the question for me of, I guess along the way, a liability is being created on the books of um, what the tax 
do is? Yep. Do uh, you want me to run with that? I think I know where you're going. Sure, go for it. Yep. Um, and one, so thing, one thing to note that yep. I think a lot of people, because the one thing I've seen in the past um, and that a lot of people picked up on was that you're not actually using the tax field within QBO, but um, yeah, you have your own machine going around it and like you said, a plug-in. So we won't be going to taxes to find what we need, right? Yeah, no, yeah, no, no more. And it's it's really you're not creating unique tax items for every taxing jurisdiction and combination yeah. there with other tax jurisdictions. That huge mess really goes away. Um, it's like it's like replacing you know one tax item to rule them all, right? Avatax is just going to handle every tax decision. Um, what happens though as you run transactions, we're growing your sales tax payable account. In right. QuickBooks Online, so you're having one central account of total tax collected. Um, that's that's really a general ledger overview, a snapshot of sales tax. Okay. The granular reporting is within Avalara, um, and so at the end of a, a you know a quarter, at the end of a month, um, you come to re approve your liability worksheet. Uh, you'll see a nice total in the bottom right of how much we're going to file this filing period, mm -hmm. um, and. Total, you're really just going to reflect in QBO. You're going to, you know, do a check to a vendor. You probably set up Avalara as your sales tax vendor, um, and you adjust sales tax payable given what we're filing. So you're keeping account at a high level of what's happening. All the granular um, detail is really right here within Avatax. Okay, and then what you said too, like if you have some like early pay discounts or stuff, that you guys are accounting for that in the books. Yep. Okay. Uh, you can actually see it here, so um, I'll show you these blue numbers expand. Uh, there's a vendor discount. We would be showing you that at a state by state level, uh, the discount that was applied. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's one way, right? You have Avalara file. Uh, of course, if you want to leverage certain components of our solution and not others, that's, that's up to you as a user. Um, you can use simply reports to file your own tax returns as well. Um, so you have the option to pull sales tax return reports, liability reports. Um, really, different states are going to require a different level of detail. So in Texas, you have to report for every taxing jurisdiction exactly what's been collected. They've got about a thousand in that one state. Can you imagine? That's a huge pain. So if you have uh, the need for that level of detail, we have reports that drill down deeper. Some allow more of summary uh, on the returns. Of course, you can get that level if you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> I know some <laughs> people might want to do the, the sales tax reporting, yeah. but I'm like, yeah, no, I want someone else to do that return for me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it, it turns into our greatest referral resources uh, accountants, right? I mean, nobody. This is a thankless job. It's it's no fun. Nobody wants to do it. Error prone. It right. adds nothing to the bottom line. You know, it, it just hits all those components of um, the things that kind of make you cringe about being compliant. So we. You know, highly encourage that people use the full end-to-end -end solution. Uh, of course, there are maybe instances where people like to keep things in-house, um, you know, or, or just save money and, and do it themselves. So right, and you're offering them that flexibility. But like I said, yeah, like yeah. if you're going, I, I would prefer if I'm already here. I'm like, oh, okay, I yeah, that's one yep. of the least favorite parts of that too. So absolutely, yeah, and I encourage it. You know, give it a shot. You know, you have a chance to at least give it a try or start with one and move your way to the next level as, as it gets more complex. Or if you're in one state today, calculation, you know, might be really useful. And then as you expand to 10 or 15 states that you need to be filing with, um, I mean, it gets exponentially more difficult to maintain that. So it's not 10 times harder. It's a hundred times harder. You just need to leverage tools like this. Otherwise it becomes a full-time job for an employee. So. Right. And let me, let me ask you some questions. So I, I do have one client that I kind of like try to keep up with on the sales tax now. And um, sometimes all the information doesn't get, get in there. So say like if I create an invoice and that client doesn't have their address in there, does Avatax kind of give you like an error code or something? Yeah. Yeah. It, it'll have, you know, it'll, it'll read out, you know, can't calculate tax because the addresses aren't complete or, you know, you're shipping this product to, to nowhere. Um, so right. yeah, it will, it'll, it'll kind of protect you from, you know, giving us bad information to, to make a bad tax decision. Um, you know, we can't infer information that's not exist. So if you don't put an address, you know, we're not going to just 
put a map right. in and then throw a dart at it. So um, you do need to have good data information about what it is you're doing, where you're sending these products in order for an accurate decision to come back. But yeah, that, for me, coming in as an accountant after the fact, after they've done the invoices, I can't really do, you know, I can't really say something then as well as it's nice that, yeah, if you're giving an error immediately on the spot of, hey, no, yeah. now is the time you need to enter this information for us <laughs> that, exactly. you know, yeah. so that we can make this determination. That'd be nice. Um, yeah. Um, the other thing that comes up sometimes, and this might be strange and not normal, but um, so like I'll have a client do an invoice and then um, I calculate the tax. Um, they got paid on that invoice or, or whatever and we, we close it out in one month. And then a month or two later, that original invoice gets changed again. <laughs> like something gets added to it where I've already reported on it in the prior month and now there's been a change. Like what, does Avatax have any control or system to help with that? Yeah, so um, this liability worksheet, and I'll go back to it just to make sure we're looking at the same thing together. Um, so this liability worksheet will lock down on the 10th of every month. So you have between, you know, the end of the month, we're going to produce this review for you to come and take a look at. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometime between the 1st and the 5th, hopefully you're done well before the 10th. Uh, and then this will lock and we're going to file. And so you can go change things in the back. Clearly that's not the best accounting practices. Um, if right. you ever needed to, to really amend a return or claim a bad debt, for example, at the end of the year, um, that's something that our clients continually do. Uh, I often suggest you just pick up the phone because it's not a regular use of our service. Uh, and you're okay. kind of telling it to do something that's against accounting practices, right? So, right. Um, yeah, that, and that's that's really an account management or a support question that we do provide. And uh, either we're going to help you do it or we'll just simply adjust it based off of your instructions. So uh, um, it will provide a tax decision, right? Our tax engine is date and time sensitive. Um, you know, Dr. Sarsha, if you want to go see whether or not software was taxed in your state four years ago, you could enter in an old date. <laughs> And the tax engine will recognize what was the rule and the rate back then. So wow. um, it will continue to be accurate. Uh, it's, it's got a very good ability to kind of cross time. Um, so if you do need to amend it and you do want to have some sort of return on the incorrect tax in a previous transaction, of course, you can use the system that way. But we're going to protect you from filing this locks on the 10th. Right, which is kind of the – so I'm thinking in my instance it will happen with those locks in – and having that date on the the invoice, like I could see if it's been changed after the fact. For me, it's always been like, I don't know which one was changed. I, you know, that's going to be a lot of research to go back in and figure out why this tax amount's different, um, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it, it's easier. Again, I think you could pinpoint it better. And then obviously, if we can be just recommending to our clients, um, let's just invoice in the current period. That would be great. Yeah. Um, another thing, you just you brought up a great use case. I just want to show this. Um, so I'm in QBOA right now, and uh, mm -hmm. apologize, the screen's moving again. Um, once it comes back here, so uh, if I have a client that is using this, you know, Diana Waterman, she's on this call here, and she'll be speaking in a moment. Um, she created a QBO file, uh, and she invited me to be, you know, her accountant. Uh, well, Diana also has this application running, and so. If I go into her books and let's say this client calls me and says, hey, I needed you to change something on a previous transaction that we ran, um, it's, it's going to work right here as well. And so you could do an adjustment. You can change the, the date, the shipping. Um, you can change items. This will push through to Diana's uh, Avatax account. Does that okay. make sense? So if you yeah. want to do it on behalf of your client, make an adjustment. You're not having to try and remember, wait a minute, now do I need to go to Avalara and do a separate thing? No, if your client is using uh, Avatax, uh, you're going to be able to make changes and add invoices in your client's file that will reflect onto their sales tax returns or their sales tax reports, you know, however you want to aggregate that information at the end of the month. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, best practice for getting set up with uh QBO and Avatax is to have your client download it and then, you know, clearly invite you. Don't be downloading it on behalf of your clients. Um, that end user relationship is great. We recognize who they are. They call support. They have an account with us. Um, you know, terms and conditions, the payment, everything. It just seems to work much smoother. Um, and really our QBO, you know, clients 
uh, the, just that having that relationship with Avalara and knowing that we're filing for them has really worked well in the past. So typically a referral resource is the best if you want your clients to download the app, then they invite you. Okay. Yeah. So, and then show me, like, if, do you have the console kind of set up a little bit like QBOA does where you can see all your clients? Uh, you mean in a from Avatax perspective or from yeah right here? from the Avatax perspective of well, like when you're av in Avatax can you see can you get like a drop down of which clients you have on there? Um, so they will all have their unique logins, right? And so you would be logging in and they can set you up as a administrator to their account. Okay. Um, what we do have uh, at today's terms is the ability for a complex corporate structure, um, which is, is probably what you're keying in on in here and seeing. Um, and so when you, you know, tie TBO to Avatax, it creates your company um, and allows you to set up levels of determinations around, you know, what are my items and how do I want Avalara to tax them? Uh, where do I have Nexus? Where would I like Avalara to collect tax for me? Um, but let's say you have maybe multiple companies or you sell through a website and Amazon and other locations, we can actually tie the taxes to either a subsidiary, um, you can create custom rules if you have, you know, different parent structure there. Um, mm -hmm. So what we're showing here is, is really a single account having the ability to create complex corporate structure. This is not necessarily designed around a pro advisor having their client list within here yet today. So, um, okay. yeah, you as an advisor would be able to, you know, if if the, your client gives you access to log into their account uh, and approve that worksheet, for example, would be a common practice. So, and this is, I mean, this is not uncommon with apps. And um, so I had this situation before where I set up an account and was like, oh, wait a second. Like I need to kind of have a separate ID for each one. Yeah. Um, so is it something where, like, it might be recommended that you have, you know, client ABC at, you know, for me, iconosgroup.com sort of thing as my login and have that shifted over so that that would be my login email and I could get into it just that one client because I don't want to give it my main email address, right? Yeah, yeah. So just you're, you're, you're thinking just like a separate... Not a junk email, but just like a, right. just a login. Yeah, just a login credential that's easy to remember. That's absolutely rec recommended, yes. Um, and we're looking to mirror kind of the ecosystem of the QBOA environment and, and bridge this gap here where, you know, a single login for an accountant to see clients, right? That's clearly where we're going. Um, but in today's, you know, best practices and using us the right way, you're really going to want to have your end clients create an account and then just simply give you access to it. Um, yeah. And you, you know, you set up your own login in a way that's easy to remember, um, and you can do that. And eventually, you know, we're going to bridge this gap. I know we're, you know, that's that's the goal here. Um, but I don't want to misdirect in today's, you know, best use. So. Well, that's, I mean, that was the thing is, I think that's important for people to know because, like I said, I had a different app where I went in and I used my own email, and I was like, oh, okay, that's now locked to a client, and if I ever want to add someone else, now I'm just going to have to do it, or if I want. To, uh, my thing was I wanted to set up an account for myself, and I was like, well, now I have to use my personal email or something. Yeah. So yeah. knowing it ahead of time is much better than after the fact when you already have, like, an ID set locked into someone. Absolutely, yeah. And, and uh, you know, your client gets their account, they log in, they immediately come in and say, I want to add a new user. Right. Um, and they can say, you know, what level of permission and they would likely you know if you're their accountant and they want you to approve this information they would just make you an account admin and by doing so it's going to send you the account you know information and say hey you've been added to this account go here and create your own you know uh, license key right you're basically you're going to go in and create your own password so um, your your users the end clients would likely be doing this process after mm -hmm. that you as the advisor can log into their account I see security rules on there. What kind of security rules do you have or different user rights? Um, yeah, just a view only or um, – let me show you. I'll just go here. So they have account user, account admin, company user, company admin. So if I have a complex corporate structure and I want you as the accountant only to go approve uh, a division, I could make it yeah. so that when you log in, you only see that division. You're a company user specific to ABC subsidiary number one. You don't get to see anything else. Um, so you can create, you know, and maybe administrative rights, you can approve everything at that level as well. So you can kind of give them deeper access given what, you know, given what 
their role is. So. Awesome. Yeah. Um, high level on the homepage, uh, you've got nice service notices, account alerts. This is really the reason you're using our service, but if you ever wanted to see the 14,000 changes we're doing every year, um, <laughs> we're just going to post a little update for you. Um, knock your stocks off. That's going to be the worst weekend activity ever, but have, you know, have at it. And then uh, we give you a tax summary and exemption exposure. Um, and something I'd love to point out is just the help center, right? We have an incredible knowledge base around just tax in general. You know, you're starting to do fulfillment by Amazon. What's the implications of that? Um, you want to have a traveling sales force. Will that generate Nexus, right? You have access to lots of great information. This is also just public facing on our website, of course. Um, and then I noted it before, you're going to get an account manager. Their picture will be there. Uh, just someone who's a familiar face, someone you can reach out to, change your account, your settings with Avalara. Um, that person will be listed there for you. That's nice. Yeah. Um, a great tool that accountants often use is they get questions about, you know, offhand, is this tax, is this not tax, right? I, they need to be able to answer and be dynamic with questions from clients. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of accounting firms will leverage this tools function here, and we have really a fancy calculator, but it's a sales tax calculator where you can actually just simply type in an address and you can type in a product set or use the tax codes that we have and quickly understand a lot of information, whether or not that product is or is not taxable in that jurisdiction, what rates do apply. Um, and so that information is just, it's basically like running an invoice, but it's right here within the system. Um, and so you can type in an origin, you can type in a destination, uh, and then you can leverage our tax codes, um, which I have a nice little quick link I can share with you. But um, once again, it's public facing and allows you just to query our tax research. And so you could say, you know, I have clients that are selling clothing. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We've got 248 good and service types for clothing. So it just depends on what it is you're really doing. Oh. If you want to keep it generic, you would copy the code. You could plug it in. Uh, and let's put some depth to this. Let's make it $100, and we'll say calculate tax. So just that fast, I understand the total amount, you know, the $100 item. Uh, I get to see here a breakout of whether or not that clothing was or was not taxable. I get to see the rates that are applied. So there's a state county or a state rate of Washington of six and a half. Uh, the county rate not applicable there, and then there was a city of Seattle of 3.1%. So those little questions, right, that might bog you down and be frustrating, you become a resource. You become someone who's got really great resources. And I guarantee the 20th time that that client calls you, you're going to say, can you stop calling me? Just go buy this plug-in, right? Go use Avalara. <laughs> this becomes part of your Excellent. buying process. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, you said that you can pull in data from other things. Is it, like, I'm thinking Shopify where um, – some, they have the fields in there, the tax fields in there. Is it something that you can also integrate with other systems? Yeah. Uh, so we have over 450 partners today. Um, what a partnership is, is we really uh, approach a relationship with the developers of the software. So, for example, Intuit is a partner. Um, we create an integration there that ideally is plug and play that is not requirement of development work. Um, that allows you to leverage the technology, and we would just point it at your existing uh, Avalara account. So you could have QuickBooks talking to us while you have 3D Cart or Magento. Um, you can have a POS system that is reaching out to us from your storefront while you're selling online, and then everything meets in the middle in QBO. Really, we're going to find the best way to plug this in that captures all your sales data, that aggregates it in one central place, and then we properly file and remit based off of everything you've done. Um, so just to give you kind of a, a snapshot uh, of maybe some of the partnerships, and I'll put this up on the screen for you here. And I'm assuming uh, if you get confused, your account manager might be a good resource yeah, for you. Yeah, absolutely. This. Yeah, I mean they're they're happy to help. Um, you know, switching out a connector is what we refer to it. If you have the yeah. wrong one, or you need a different one, or you have other sales channels, um, you know, we're here to collaborate and find the best way to take care of you. So. Um, for example, with Intuit, you know, we're Gold Certified Development Partner with Intuit for sales tax. Uh, we're white labeled within Sage, Microsoft Dynamics, NetSuite. You know, as clients grow and they need different components, um, you know, their sales tax account stays the exact same, right? We just integrate and operate within these ecosystems. Um, same goes for an e-commerce environment as well. And this is just a few. If you don't see it here, 
Uh, we have an integrations page. You can go and just kind of type in what you're using and see what we have for you. Nice. Uh, in the event we don't integrate, our APIs are public, so you can build your own. Um, very common practice, literally on a daily basis, we have clients just simply either a homegrown system or someone we don't have a partnership with yet, they're building that bridge themselves. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. That's cool. So um, I know, I don't know how much more you have to share, but I know Diana was also on the call to talk to us about like what's available to pro advisors right now to help them out and, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you can see how powerful this tool is. And we're thinking if you have QBO clients that could benefit from this type of sales tax compliance uh, automation app, you know, saving them time, keeping them out of jail and so forth, um, mm -hmm. send them our way because, you know, we like nothing better than referrals from accounting professionals. And we have a really special offer. Um, if you go to info.avalera.com forward slash Avacash Pro, and you can see it in the chat. Mm -hmm. What we'll do is we have a form where you can just fill out a referral of a client, somebody, a QBO client, again, who you think could benefit from the app. And you'll get $75 gift card for every referral, whether they download the app or not. Just for every referral, because we love them from you, um, we'll send you a $75 gift card via email. And then what will happen is we'll take that information that you gave us, we'll email your clients, and we will offer them six months free using the app. And they don't have any obligation. They don't have to give us a credit card. I mean, it really is that easy. They just try it. Because we know that um, somebody who has any kind of tax complexity, who's spending any amount of time doing this manually, or has felt the pain of sales tax automation and compliance, um, that when they use it, they'll love it. We have that that confidence. And, you know, one thing that Jesse um, didn't mention is that we have a very strong ironclad guarantee about our accuracy. And so that goes a long way. That's awesome. And so one thing I'm thinking to myself is like some of those tools that Jesse had of like being able to give the client like an estimate as to like how much, what is taxable and stuff like that. Is it something where I need to set myself up with an account to get that? Um, Cause I, then I have the question, I don't think anything I do is taxable, but you never know with everything out there. Yeah, I'll, I'll field that question. I mean, it, it's clearly uh, a tool you can leverage, and if you just simply want access to the dashboard to make calculations, right, um, you know, a very basic account with us is very inexpensive. So um, there are a lot of accounting teams that will simply buy that, and uh, I mean, I've visited with them on site. We have fun playing with that system. Um, it saves them a ton of time. You know, a very, very minimal investment to just simply have access to that tool. Um, it, you know, is by all means something I would encourage. Um, it's up to you, right. you and your client. So, yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it seems like a great resource to have. I'm just like, yeah, I'd like to just have that handy if I ever need it. Yeah. So. Yep. That's awesome. Um, absolutely. Any other questions, though, Kathy, about functionality and just the use, um, you know, of the app? I, mean, I hope that kind of clarified it for you and gave you give you a, a simple picture of how to use this. Um, I know you gave me the perfect picture of how to use it and I hope everyone else appreciates how um, clean and simple this looks and I, I think you covered um, all the questions I had at least. I don't know, um, you know, viewers of the video after the fact, maybe if they have any questions, what's the best way to reach out to you guys? Um, I'm directly available um, and will honestly be willing to talk with people who've got questions. Um, obviously, you can reach out to Avalara. There are contact me forms you can fill out there. Um, you know, if you have questions, we're happy to chat uh, as well as I am willing to take calls or a direct email. So um, if I don't know the answer to the question, I certainly will know who will, uh, whether it has to do with our accounting programs in Diana's field, um, simply a end user question and support. Um, or you want to simply talk strategy, how to leverage the app, you know, I'm happy to go over that. So, Awesome. And now, you know, this is a touchy question. Are you on Twitter? <laughs> uh, I am on Twitter. Uh, I don't think I've ever used it other than for a TBO <laughs> chat environment that I needed to join months ago. So I can reboot my Twitter um, and become much more of an active user. Uh, hey, I think I probably should be given my access to some updates on tax. So. We could just throw it out there. And Diana, I think you, you've joined us on tweet, on QBO Chat Absolutely. before. Absolutely. Yeah. We love QBO Chat. 
So you guys can, you know, it's out there. We can hunt you down if we need to, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll get on it. <laughs> you don't have to get on it. I know Twitter's not that for everyone, and we don't expect it to. That's why we want to do other things like this so that um, people can still get the information about great products that are out there. So yeah. um, I really appreciate your time and your information, and I, I um, little, I don't know if I prefaced this before, but I actually hadn't looked at this product before this demo. So I like it. Um, I've seen like a snippet of it before, um, but obviously I got to get far more into it this time, and yep. I really like it, and I'm very excited about it, and I want to try it on a couple of clients. So you got me as a client for sure. Great. Um, well, thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. And no problem. It's it's our pleasure, and I think you guys do amazing thing to to help people out there with sales tax. It's a huge issue that people. It's a lot more complicated than anyone even understands. And yeah, they don't want to understand it. <laughs> right. And that's my world is like I just know it's a lot more complicated than I want to know, so I'm good. It's like that's enough for me. Um yeah. but I think I think all this information is really gonna help a ton of people out. So thank you so much for your time and your information today. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you. We appreciate it. Okay, awesome. You guys have a great one. You Bye. Bye. Bye.